Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I want to share these gorgeous gothic window ornaments with you. These were made using the Cricut Maker with the single scoring wheel and the fine point blade. The SVG bundle, including the print then cut file, is available for you to download for free at the Thicket Works website. There's a link in the description. These ornaments were made using 65 pound cardstock and laser print transparencies. Once you've scored and cut all of your pieces on the Cricut Maker, this is what they will look like. There's a single scoring line down the center of this piece, which is intended to fold in half. Each one of these pieces yields four of these fun little gift tags. And the print then cut file can be used with either regular copy paper or, as I'm going to be doing, printing and then cutting laser transparencies. Once the pieces are layered together, this beautiful gothic medieval stained glass window effect is created. And it's really easy to do. Let's get started. The process begins by folding this intricate die cut in half along the score line at the center point. Now here I'm demonstrating doing that with my fingers and the handle of a pair of scissors. My preferred method, however, is to use a square palette knife and a thin metal blade like this spatula to get a really crisp and clean crease. And then I reinforce that crease using an agate burnisher. There. See how it's all going to fit together? Easy peasy. But before we start constructing them, it's important to think about the finish that you would like to create. I've chosen to work with some jewel tones from the Prima Metallique Acrylic Craft Paint line. I've thinned this paint slightly with tap water and I'm applying the emerald green doing one thin coat and then drying with a heat tool before applying an additional thin coat being careful to avoid brush strokes once the exterior is painted now I can glue in the faux stained glass print then cut piece I really like using Zig two-way glue for operations like this. It allows me enough working time, even I am able to get this lined up perfectly. I use a brayer to make certain that the adhesive is joining together the print thin cut piece and the surrounding die cut extremely firmly. Once I've completed the first side, I add adhesive to the other side of the die cut and then repeat the procedure using a brayer and also the agate burnisher, especially at the base of the piece where that crease tends to exert a lot of pressure on the paper to pop up. Once all the burnishing is complete, we can now turn to embellishing this little ornament. I've chosen to work with Gem Tack Adhesive for a variety of embellishments here. I'm working with rhinestones and flat back pearls. The next paint I've chosen to work with is this gorgeous, luscious, dark velvet. And again, I've thinned the paint slightly with tap water to make it easier to avoid leaving brush strokes on the surface. I apply it one thin coat and then dry that with a heat tool before applying a second coat and then constructing the piece. Now if you were to use the printer paper version of these print then cut images, it would be important for you to add two of them back to back so that the lovely graphic shows through on both sides. And once this gothic window ornament is thoroughly glued and burnished, it's time to play with embellishments. For this darker toned piece, I've chosen to work with these gorgeous metallic studs intended for 
manicure embellishments. But personally, I think they add just the right touch against that delicious dark violet color. Next, I'm punctuating the design with these vibrant ruby red glass rhinestones. The final of these jewel toned pieces has been painted with metallic in brass hardware for a rich tarnished antique gold appearance. And on this piece, I'm going hog wild, beginning with those luscious ruby red rhinestones. And I know that you can see here that the gem tack has oozed out around the edge of the gems. If that bothers you, you can clean it up easily with the tip of a dampened paintbrush. But the adhesive will dry clear, so it's not something that you have to be excessively concerned about. Now I'm using these manicure embellishments that have little gold frames already attached to them. I can't even tell you how much I love that look. So rich. Now, for a different take on these same ornaments, these remain unpainted, and I'm going to add a series of what will appear to be nail heads by simply dotting UV resin around the perimeter of the design and at key points on the interior, just whatever suits your eye. These can be quickly cured under a UV lamp. I like to work on one end of the piece and then the other so that I minimize the risk of smearing any of these little dots. This is such a simple technique, but I think it's just incredibly effective. Now, once the initial nail heads have been cured, I decided to experiment with embedding a metal jump ring at the top of the ornament and curing it with the UV lamp. I was curious to see just how sturdy this would be, and actually the results are amazing. That's going to hold up for years and years, in spite of the fact that it's just paper. If you decide to create any of these lovely gothic window ornaments yourself, I would love to see images of them. I hope that your holidays are filled with magic and peacefulness. This world can be a little rough and overwhelming sometimes. It's so important that we be kind to ourselves and each other. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me today. Until next time. Bye.